Hello guys, luckily my voice is getting better compared to the last two videos so I can batch record more videos for you on YouTube and topic of today is this tweet with my reply on it. So basically the author received a code from a senior developer from someone who said that they had two senior positions and the code is pretty bad. And the author in the original tweet blamed Laravel for allowing such mess and I replied that it's of course not a Laravel fault but that is the code of particular person. So let's leave those debates aside and look at the exact code. What is actually wrong here and how it could be improved. So I've reproduced that code locally in my PHP Storm and step by step I will make it better. Maybe you will notice something else. You'll have more suggestions then shoot them in the comments below. So there's a function in a trait probably being used in multiple controllers for example. Get postal code detail by postal code from Google Maps API. And the first obvious thing that the author of the tweet pointed out is the key. The key was hard coded. So if you go back to the original tweet, this is blurred out, but the key was inside of the code. This is a very bad practice. So for example, instead of doing A, B, C, D, E here, where that key belongs. It should be in .env file of each server because each server may have different API keys. For example, locally you want to add one account, on production another account, on staging another account, like sandbox or something. So you should create a variable called, for example, Google Maps API key, something like that. In your .env you set that to real value, then you create the same thing without value in .env .example, so others, other developers, would know that it actually needs to exist, like in this case, OpenAI API key from some other project here. So your key, something like that. And then you use that API key, for example, in the trait or in controller, wherever you need that. Instead of hard coding here, you put in config, function of Laravel, services, file that already exists in Laravel. And then inside of that services config file, you would create something like Google Maps, for example, and then API key, something like that. I already have created it, but let me demonstrate. So if we open that file of services, it already contains a lot of external variables. These are by default from Laravel. So you need to add your own Google Maps and then whatever keys you need. For example, API key, which would be taken from that env that we have just created with the same key name and here you may provide a default value if it doesn't exist so this is how you should use api keys at least that's how we were using it in a team for years already now back to the main code what can we improve here the main problem with this code is a lot of nested if statements which is hard to read so let's try to understand so if the response is successful, then we get the JSON. And if the response has rows and it's not empty and it has elements, then we search for destination addresses. And if at least one of them is within UK, then is in UK variable true, which means we need to return that object with distance and duration. Otherwise, in all of those cases, if something goes wrong, we throw exception postal code not valid or if there's an error from Google API, there's another exception, and then there's general try catch. So that's how I understood the code. But this is massively too long, and it's not even about the length itself. So for example, if you see throw a new exception, is it easy to read? Which if statement does it belong to? So this, probably visually this one. So in a minute, I will refactor that into so-called early returns, but before we do that, let me point out the code styling thing. Time and time again while doing code reviews, I ask developers to provide better code styling for readability, so I added spaces here. If you compare that to the original code, as you can see there are no spaces between if statements, brackets, else's and try catch and stuff like that. And there's a saying you need to allow your code to breathe. That is both about vertical and horizontal spaces like empty rows where needed. It is of course in the code styling rules of PSR and look at this code at my version with spaces. Isn't it easier to read? 
And you can automate all of that with your ID. For example, in PHP Storm, there's command option L to reformat it according to PSR or whatever you want as your code style. Also on Laravel Daily, we have a separate article code styling in Laravel common mistakes like unused imports, function visibility, useless else definition and others. So I will link that article in the description below. This is also using Laravel Pint. So you can automate all of that to make your code readable in the first place. Now let's get to those exceptions. So the first bad thing I noticed is this one. So there is a global try catch for all of that function, which does what? If there is an exception, we just throw the same exception with the same message. I have only one question. Really? The point of try catch is not to just add that block and feel safe. You need to do something with that catch. And currently we're actually in progress of putting out the course about exceptions and various exceptions, how to catch them, how to create your own and other similar topics. So this should be out in a week or so. But basically the idea is that either you throw another exception with a different message or you log it somewhere or you notify someone, basically do something. In this case, try catch doesn't do anything. So we can safely remove it at all from the code. That would be our first optimization and reformat it like this. So one if is eliminated, then others. So we have four else blocks with the same exception of postal code not valid. Why are they in the different else blocks? But before refactoring those, let's change if else about Google API. So there is a concept called early returns, which makes your code maybe a bit longer, but much more readable. So basically you need to return the function result earlier than the main body of the function if something goes wrong. In case of some exception, invalid data, something is missing, you do. If something is wrong, then you return. That's it. That's the main concept. So then you have if this return that, if this return that, basically you start with bad case scenarios and then otherwise, so you don't even need else in that case, otherwise the function is executed. So in our case, we need to change that if response successful to if response not successful, then we return or throw exception, which will be the same as return in that case. So like that. So if response is not successful, we throw the exception and then we don't need that if statement at all. And we eliminated another level of nested ifs, reformat it to the left. So basically our goal is to have left, left, left shifting those ifs until it becomes singular flow of code partial by partial. So we get the body and then see those three ifs. We can actually combine it into one pretty easily. But again, with the opposite. So if not is set JSON rows or if JSON rows are empty array or if not is set elements, then we do what? Correct. We return, we throw the exception, the same exception that is repeating all over here for else statements. And then we don't need those else statements anymore. So we delete this one, this one, and this one. Three of them combined into one with one exception thrown in any of those three cases. And then to the left with another space. That's another example of allowing your code to breathe. So as you can see, space here, space here. This is not required, this is optional, but see how it's dividing the code into logical statements logical operations. And now the main thing, we're searching for UK in one of the addresses. I think what we can do is remove is in UK variable altogether, because if we find at least one destination of UK, we can immediately return the result. So what if we have something like this? So we copy this part. So instead of setting is in UK true, we paste that and then we don't need that variable at all. Throw new exception will be the last thing we will get to that. Then we don't need that is in UK variable up front. And yeah, so if at least one contains UK, we return and then that for each loop would not continue. The function would be returned. And also with return, it's a personal preference, but I would not put those temporary variables. 
they don't add too much clarity because they don't rename things elements element distance distance so those variables are already clear to me and that's why i would change that instead of distance as a variable to paste here full value element zero duration value and of course instead of element zero that should be this one also reformat that so instead of element like this and the array should be on separate lines let me finish and i will comment it and i'm a fan of adding comma in the last element of array so now we don't need those at all again it's a personal preference and you can see repeating parts here but in this case adding those temporary variables do not add value to me in some cases it does make sense for better readability if that variable name describes the value in a better way or really shorten the full operation in this case i didn't see much value so what happens with the last exception then if we find uk then cool we return the result if we haven't found in all those for each operations then as a final result of that function this would be exception because the function didn't reach the successful result so now look at that code versus the original code in the tweet again it's shorter but in a way it is longer so we added space here space here this is on separate lines space here so it's not about the shortness in terms of lines of code but it's much more readable with early returns with grouping the exceptions with optimizing the variables this code is much better to be consumed by other developers in the future so yeah step by step refactoring what do you think would you add something else here maybe i missed something it's always fun to discuss with you in the comments below, especially in Laravel, since it allows us to do many things in various different ways. But this example, actually, it's not about Laravel. It's more about PHP and code logic in general. So let's discuss in the comments and see you guys in other videos.